Okay. So, uh, welcome to Kanish. So, we are going to talk about uh, D2C marketing, performance marketing mistakes. Most of the marketers do with D2C brands. So, Kanish is going to talk about that. So, Kanish, all over to you. Uh, thank you, Gaurav, and thank you very much. I don't think uh, I don't. I highly deserve the kind of approach and introduction you have given. It's really warming. Thank you. So I'll be introducing myself. So I am presently studying engineering and I've been doing B2C marketing for past three years. Specifically, I'm into performance marketing, help 21 plus brands, some top brands in particular categories and subcategories as well in India and overseas market. So next coming on to in this session, I'll be not just be discussing about the mistakes, as well as I'll be discussing what's the right approach along with the mistakes. Though the presentation only contains about the right approach, because that is what is intended, I'll be discussing mistakes as and when it arrives. Hope okay. it's comfortable for all of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so can I share my screen right now? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you for taking time and thank you for joining as well. So coming to the first part. So every marketing is necessarily, it starts with research. And for research, most uh, marketers actually don't prefer to go with research and to deep dive into research, though it, it is the most important aspect because you are understanding your customer there. Other than that, anything you do further down the line will be based upon this fact that you have understood the customer it's not just quantitative understanding that he buys X, he buys Y. It's a qualitative understanding as to why he buys X, why he buys Y. So everything is needed in terms of understanding the customer. So where do you conduct research? Now you need not go on feet and uh, introduce your products to anyone on the ground and everything because everyone has access to the internet and laptop. You can go on just on social medias, Google books, customer, which is very important website, webs your own websites, computer reviews, Amazon reviews, everywhere. So how you structure is, you get on these social media platforms and generate your own questions as to why do people buy? Why do they buy? And then why, what happens after they buy the product? What are they using presently? Everything covers in this research part. So during the research, where you come across social media, Google books, customer calls, the customer calls is the most important, which I feel not many marketers do. Though they research on social media and everything, customer calls will help you understand how others think about your brand rather than just founder. If you can take up any three to four customers and give them incentives that provide them anything like 10% discount if you come on a call or anything like that, it would be really helpful because it will help you understand how the brand is perceived in terms of the customer point of view. Uh, just Researching will also not help until unless, until unless you understand how the brand is being perceived. That is also most important in terms of brand building and performance marketing. Yeah, Kanish, so I want how to, do you conduct? Uh, Kanish, I want to interrupt you here because that's a very valid point you're talking about. Because when we talk to business owners, most of the times what they do is now they they tell something about their product or service or their customer, which really is not the fact. They have certain assumptions. They really don't know why is a customer buying their product really. Uh, many times, whatever, there can be 10 reasons, but maybe business owner will know only one or two reasons. So like you said, talking to customers yeah. uh, can definitely add a lot of insight. And definitely we also understand their trigger points, pain points, and the specific words they use while uh, talking. So that now you can use that back in your copy or creative to make it like now resonate or ring a bell. That's what you're trying to say. Correct, correct. So here yeah. there is also a case study where they say about in 1960s and 1970s, there was a cake brand, which is, I think it's Pillsbury, I'm not very sure. I'm not very sure. So what they did is they made the cake making process really efficient for the mothers. But it's the it was more efficient than 10x more efficient, I would say, than the previous type of uh, work could, that could be used to make the cake. To bake the cake but even then the product did not sell after research they found out the reason product did not sell is because mothers prefer that they make their own cake with their hands for their sons and for their children everyone so that is what research will tell you 
though you can make the custom product most efficient most cheap most of not just cheap most affordable most mass market but research will tell you as to why the customer is buying okay though you provide ready made cake even then the, it was not selling mm -hmm. it just took 2 minutes but then they increase the process to 20 minutes and it sold like hot cakes <laughs> Means they so want to feel like uh, they want to feel like they have did something for their kids. That's an emotional uh, point of view. And today's day, maybe it is, uh, yes. it is reverse. Today it's okay; people will buy. <laughs> But that time, I think yeah. the mindset was like that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. yeah. Correct. So when you, whenever you go on social media, anything, don't just read the text. Mark important words which are repeatedly arriving. For example, to go on any Reddit or subreddits. people share lengthy stories around 200 300 words so what if the words are repeated like for example i am working on a skin care brand so they repeat very much about acne the words like acne exfoliate and then uh, serums everything related to that so what if the words they repeat note down everything and then use it in your copy because it establishes relation, relevance to the customer whenever you are talking to it establishes the as such that someone known is talking to them though you are an advertiser yeah it, yeah it creates a perception like that and amazon is done fantastic job just go to reviews just above reviews you have certain words where you can filter the reviews by certain words so those words are like gold mine for any product whichever product you are go pick up those words just copy them share it keep it with you and whenever you try to write your copy use those words and include those words in your copy next as to how do you actually conduct your research is type your product name on reddit so reddit is mostly preferable for me so type your product name sort by top or top comments you have sort you can sort by hot or you can sort by top or you can sort by top comments then read all the stories read the headlines which of you which of piques your interest go and read the full article filter out what are the pains they are talking about who was their situation before what are they doing now what are they planning everything what are they looking for in the product because people look for something in the product like for example if you are selling shoes they look for size and comfort first then design and everything if you are selling apparel design is the most important for them so you need to look as to what is not just their pains but also what is the value prop they are looking for not just it's not just that they need free shipping or something the value prop which they need in the product that is important so there are other ways whereas you can use templates like is there a way to insert your problem here which means for example if you are a skin care brand is there a way to clear acne without your products understand the alternatives about it why people are buying alternatives and not your product that will help you to book your customers as to why you should not buy that alternative because for example people buy people are not buying chemical products and they are buying Ayur ayurvedic products so if you are ayurvedic skin care brand you should go out and say that this is chemical this is not paraben free however this is paraben free so that way you do the research then you can also for copies and for copy you can use best insert your product category and brands so best product category meaning best skin care brands in uh, india or in bangalore or whatever it is that way you will get a list of all the cust all the brands which are doing well understand what are the features they have then find out what are they missing on then position your product there that way you'll attract good niche audience hmm. Hmm. next changing trends in the industry this is a really good unique concept which i don't see more often used understand what is a trend in the industry in the category not just in your product or not just any social media trend or fad anything but what is the trend in the category for example in shoes sneakers are trending right now or in skin care it is about vitamin c uh, paraben free sulfate free so if you can mention those in your product and in your creative people will be attracted more so you need to understand that as well so coming to the next part next some more template should be list of best brands then alternative to your solution like alternative to uh face serum or alternative to face wash whatever it is or alternative to sneakers we don't type alternative to sneakers but any commodity product whatever then what should your research answer what triggers people to buy the journey for i'll explain this question a bit what triggers people is anish uh, just wanted to again uh, rewind on what you're talking about that uh, 
Uh, can you okay. go back to the first slide? In that, yeah. you were talking about, uh, uh, like, uh, you talked about Reddit. Yeah. Okay. But one thing what I actually try to understand is, because there are many Indian uh, brands and Indian customers. I don't see many Indian customers uh, are, are active on Reddit. So uh, what is the alternate uh, places where you look for, like, na, when you're trying to find some information? Yeah. So what is the alternate place? I go for competitor sites, Amazon reviews of other brands. Hmm. Then I look for on Google, you can search India, like type everything and type India. Hmm. You'll get a list of products, like the next three points where you mentioned best skincare brands in India, like the third point. Okay. So you, you want to say, uh, these are the places you want to go to, like social media, Facebook, uh, Google. Then uh, anywhere you go, you, you need to ask these kind of questions. Uh, you need to figure out how you ask because it's the calls, it should be different way. But you want to figure out this kind of information you need to get from the, those platforms. So uh, we want to make, we yeah. want to get clear that, uh, guys, we need to go to social media where, where we go, Facebook or Amazon or maybe Flipkart, maybe other websites, then website, uh, then other uh, other blogs or anywhere you go, try to figure out these, these get answers to these questions. So uh, Kanish wants to tell the number one mistake people do is not spending enough time on research, researching about uh, the customers or the product or the competitors, like basic stuff about before you start the campaign. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So next, it is about what your research should contain. What triggers people to begin the buying journey? For example, when will a, uh, people buy the face wash if they have some uh, skin problems or something? Otherwise, mm -hmm. usually we don't prevent before we face the problem. It's usually not the human mindset at all. Reactive approach. Yeah, it's reactive than proactive. Hmm. So what triggers people you need to understand? Because then you'll know why are people buying it. Next, it is about what are the pain so solutions everyone knows about. Then what is the selfish desire? For example, if you're buying a face wash, it's not about just clearing out acne. It's about looking good. That is their selfish desire. You need to understand what is the selfish desire rather than just the solution part. Then what are the problems industry is prevalent with? What is pervasive across the industry? You need to understand that as well. Next, it is about what are some limiting beliefs? I hope you recall what I said a couple of minutes back regarding 1960s that the, uh, the brand was not able to sell the cake, cake uh, making process because that was a limiting belief that I need to put in effort. Otherwise, it's not good. So that kind of limiting beliefs you need to extract. So yeah. that is very important. Next, committing, uh, coming on to creatives as the biggest level. Not enough people understand that creatives is the main thing rather than targeting. Your creative should do the targeting. Creatives is what drives people to action, not just your targeting. You can target the best people, but even then, your audience will not react until unless they understand your point, which is done through creatives. For example, you, you, you have a you have a billboard uh, in the center of the city. You, you got a space, the billboard. So you you feel like the targeting is right every it's in the right place. Yeah. But if creative is not attention grabbing enough or it's not having the wow effect, then people will not try to go further into it. So uh, so okay. what you're saying is that the, the, that's what creative and many people I see even I have also come across this. Many marketers, performance marketers, they are not even spending enough time or money on uh, having the right kind of a creative. That's what I am actually observing. This challenge is there, like you're pointing out right thing. Yeah, please carry on. Yeah. yeah. So you need to think about creative as if it is a Times Square billboard. That's your Times Square billboard. That's it. Like Times Square is a prime place in New York. Like it is known across the globe. So otherwise, think about it as a billboard in Mumbai, a, a rich street in Bandra or somewhere. Mm. So that is your billboard, actually. You need to grab attention. Now, why I say targeting is not important is when you're doing the targeting, you're appealing only to a small market. When you don't do targeting, and if, if your creative does the targeting, you're appealing to the small market, but the rest market, you're grabbing their attention. So whenever they want to buy a product related to your brand or related to your category, your brand will be top of the mind. That's the reason why targeting is not that important. Targeting is important, but creative is more important. Yeah. This is an interesting insight, Tanish. Uh, Tanish, like, 
you told about the creative the the way you really attract the right kind of people instead of you thinking that maybe this person uh, man age about 35 will be interested or woman age about 36 will be interested look so creative yeah. itself is actually trying to be the targeting thing like it's able to filter out because these are the kind of people it's attracting to that's an interesting perspective correct yeah so how do you develop good creatives first you need to understand what is the category of product you are selling is it innovative like is it innovative meaning you are have uh, a, an innovation like philips does it hmm. is it innovative or is it a common product like shirts t-shirts or barrels shoes and everything or is it solution based solution meaning the skin care products it's solution based like you are giving of acne supplement products where you are bulking up the muscles and everything other than uh, other things as well you need to differentiate you need to categorize products into this is the category then according to what the category is you need to build the creative because all creatives are not best for each category i'll explain i'll explain to you so first it is for example it is an innovative product what you do is you show how the product works why is you know why is it innovative rather than just showing the product people will not understand if you just show the shirt people will understand but if you just show trim it they will not understand so why is this because it's innovative they are not seen in the in the past so you need to show how the product works then you need to show what are the use cases because people don't know how to use this where to use this so you need to show that as well next carousel on what are the variants available what are the customers what customers can use it how they can use it so everything your innovative product should show that is a kind of creative approach you need to follow for an innovative product next for the known products which is known products as i said it's men shirts women dresses and everything you need to explain what is the benefit of your product rather than just showing working people know why they why they should wear shirt they know already you need not show that you need to show the variants you need to show what is the benefits of this product why you have used the fabric you have used that and carousel should right then you this is where like known products are where there is categorize differentiation is hard and that is where the good storytelling captures the market because nike does not sell shoes it sells an inspiration that is the storytelling shoes is there are there better shoes than nike yes are there better storytellers regarding the sneakers nike sells nike sells no that is what a good storytelling can do in a commoditized product commoditized products are known products which are prevalent across the industries whom anybody can go to a manufacturer and get it done it's a storytelling that matters why this product and how this can relate to your story nike sells the concept of if you wear nike shoes you are an embodiment of that you are doing it you you just do it it's even the tagline that you are an inspiration for everyone that, can, you, can you give can you give an example or can you give a uh, uh, how can a guy who is selling let us say sarees let us say अभी दास जी भी कॉल में है जो हैंडलूम सारीस का मार्केटिंग करते हैं या उनका खुद का कुछ है तो हैंडलूम सारीस या सारीस विच आर ऑफ अ स्पेसिफिक दिस थिंग हैंडलूम सारीस इज वन काइंड ऑफ एन एच सो फॉर दैट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अप्रोच विल यू टेक फॉर अ क्रिएटिव या सो फॉर एग्जांपल दिस कम्स टॉप ऑफ द माइंड विदाउट एनी रिसर्च आई एम सेइंग दिस दिस कैन बी फॉलो सो हाउ इट हैपेंस यू कैन सेल दैट दिस सारी व्हेन यू वेयर दिस सारी you are explaining you are you are raising your status quo this is a premium market mm. you are selling this sari is at a premium price and if you are buying this sari then you are i would not say that rich but you are affluent ha ha you are an affluent market mm. but like apple sells an affluency apple sells status quo you can position your saris as if you wear this kind of sari then it is you are affluent you are more about respect deserving Hmm. Something like that. You are in a selected group who are in the top in terms of econ- financial condition. Yeah, yeah. Like that you can position. Yeah. That's the story you are telling. Because Rolex also says the same story, which is about it sells watches, but it says that it is only for a premium market. Not anybody can buy it. If you are buying Rolex, you you value your time. Yeah, maybe That's you should time. portray portray working women in top positions or maybe entrepreneurs in top positions. Yes. that kind of creative you should pull off or maybe a politician in a top position yeah uh, maybe that that kind of class you want to maybe you want to show that you wear this and you you will be seen similar to those people like uh, maybe yeah yeah correct sorry it's a selling an experience yeah next coming on to the solution 
based products, solution based means supplement products, your acne, your face washes, everything. What you need to show is you need to guarantee. People are looking for a guarantee there. People want to know whether the solution will work. That's it. You need to give them an irresistible guarantee that if this does not work, we'll return it back, we'll give you a new new thing completely for free. That kind of guarantee people are talking about. And then images agitating the pain that you show images which are cringy. Where, for example, if, if you zoom out this, zoom out this part and use it as a creative, where you show acne, where people are picking the acne, that is a kind of creative which grabs attention. And it grabs attention of people who are picking their acne, which is the audience you're targeting. So everything matters. Then creatives with a focus on risk reversal and the time required. Here, time is the most important thing because you're selling a solution. People want to know how fast it is and what is the risk involved? What are the side effects of this supplement and what is the risk involved? This is most important. In shirts, you don't need any risk or people are not looking for anything. What is fast? They're looking for the solution based products. So that is the kind of approach you need to follow for developing your creatives. Now, how do you create good creatives is whenever you go on to Reddit or whenever you go on to blogs, read articles, check out what images people are posting. Use those images as inspiration to actually show to the customers in your creative. For example, when I was working with a skincare brand, I saw an image where uh, they were pricking their acne. So I got that as an inspiration that yes, we can use this image pricking their acne and then mention as a tagline that uh, this is clear acne or whatever it is. That grabs attention because it's related to their life. It, it will ring a bell because they they have done that. Yes. So even if it will ring a bell, and they they connect uh, connect very well with that kind of image. Yeah, this is one thing, one strategy which my friend had told me. He does very well. So you type your product and type a trending topic. For example, skincare and Netflix. You type and go to images section of Google and find what are the images related to skincare and Netflix. You will get some amazing insights over there really amazing how you can relate skincare to netflix which attracts audience because skincare it's not very uh, healthy topic to discuss but netflix yes it is because people are entertained by it you combine two topics irrelevant topics and make it relevant that attracts attention this my friend had told me and it's really interesting there okay okay yeah. and otherwise if you need more inspiration you can type i take inspirations from type a product name and then type joke or type songs mm. related to that. For example, face wash songs. I type skincare songs. Uh -huh. I get amazing inspirations from that. So what do you get uh, from that? Maybe we should try and see. Like uh, Right now? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Oh. Uh, whatever you say. Whatever you want to. Yeah, you, you show that Netflix and skincare okay. itself is interesting. No? You can okay. it. Songs I type. So you get songs about eyes and everything. You can use this as your copy inspiration. I Hindi songs I type. Okay. 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 You can use these as your copy inspiration. Akhome Teri, Ajay TC. Ah, okay. Okay. You can use this. Don't use this directly, but it will be a copyright claim. Take inspiration from this. Yeah, you can maybe pick one line and add it to that no? so that people will recall value is very high. Yeah. yeah, because people have heard that it's a song which they can hum and then you go to the images section, you will find pretty good. Let's see, this you can use an inspiration where she is uh, removing her specs and it's highlighting that part. You sell your under eye gel, for example, if you're selling an under eye gel, you use this kind of image where uh, uh, mm -hmm. women is uh, removing her glasses and it's shining over there. So those kind of things attract attention. Yeah. yeah. Interesting one. <laughs> so, yes. So next it is about creators as your biggest levels. Yeah, once again, images, visual should be unexpected. Uneasy image of the pain. Inverted images. You don't show your product like this. You show it slant. Uh, have you ever wondered why Zara and everything? The models they use, they don't stand still. They stand <laughs> some inspiration. There's a reason behind it. Because they want people to focus on their product and not the model. That is the reason behind it. Okay. Yeah. Even Nike, Nike shows the portraits, the, uh, the model 
in front, but Zara and everything, which is selling a lifestyle, mm -hmm. they don't show their models directly. They say they show it in a weird position because the product should gain the focus. I read this some art in a, some article. It's really interesting as to why this happens. Then it's about cult figure. Copy should convey a promise. No, you use an image. That's fine. You should write a copy on that, which should convey a promise as to what your product will deliver. So, like uh, that. Because the 10 people will imagine 10 different things out of a picture. Just a picture yeah. will never come communicate exactly what you want to say. Correct. Correct. You need to come, you need to fill it with a copy and a really enth enthusiastic copy, which says five to six words, but it, it says exactly what your product does. Yeah. For that, you need to seek inspirations from your reviews and everything related to that. Sometimes one word or two words added to the image itself will uh, create a different meaning and a perspective, which generally without a, that adding that word, you will not be able to make it. Yeah, I have an example also. So in July, I was working with the brand. So I just wrote clear acne and pimples. Okay, uh, I just wrote glowing skin uh, and by clearing your acne, glow your skin by, uh, by clearing your acne. I changed the copy to glow your skin without makeup and <laughs> sales skyrocketed. That's mm -hmm. it. I just changed two words. Glow your skin by clearing your acne, and by your, by clearing your acne, I re replaced it with glow your skin without makeup. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> it's skyrocketed in terms of sales. Yeah, so, that, that's a very that's catchy that. thing. Nah? That's a very catchy thing, and also uh, it's like uh, kind of a, it triggers a lot of emotion from the uh, uh, female customers. Yeah, yeah. So you need to think copy as that powerful. It's not just the image, but your copy on the creator. Yeah. yeah. This uh, slide I'll share with you. You can check out more examples here. I have uh, shared okay. more examples in talk, Google Doc as to what kind of creatives you can use. For example, here offer base. I've written everything. For some, I've not written. For some, I've written. Everything has been listed. Anyways, I'll be sharing this uh, slide completely with uh, Mr. Govardhan, and you can look at it. Okay. Sure. Okay. One. So before going there, I will, will take a question yeah. from Dasji. What can be said for a handloom sari? Uh, I would need to understand your brand first because directly mm -hmm. saying like this, it would be shooting anything in the dark. I need to understand your brand. So yeah. you, as to, you can, I'll say you what you can do. You should think as to what you need to position your brand first. You need not target mm -hmm. 100 people. You want to target 10 people. Who can say more about your brand? Who will target 10, 100 people more? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Sorry. So maybe I think, uh, maybe I think, uh, Dasji, uh, the positioning, when the positioning is right, we can talk about saying something like, now you have a sari and a woman, elegant woman standing, and you can say, uh, style with respect or style with something, because there you want to combine those kind of, uh, I'm again, uh, Again, just giving a basic uh, uh, thoughts thoughts on this, like what Kanish is telling. If you get, go deeper, and we try to figure out out of hundred customers, if you figure out uh, 50, 60 customers, what are those? Who are those? Majority, you can find out an emotion and why. What is making them buy your sarees? If you then you can figure out that uh, what you say uh, your brands uh, recall or what whatever. No, that I think that that should be taken care of. Yeah taken into consideration. Copy also depends on brand values and how it wants to position in the market. Yes, absolutely. How do you want to position your market in the pro as a product? Do you want to position it as affordable or do you want to position it as premium? On that also copy depends on. Not just your copy, but also your font. What font you use also matters. If you're using a premium font, if you're using a luxury font, or if you're using a basic font, that also matters. That is how important the creative should be. Your font, your sizing, Everything matters. Colors, colors also will come. Yeah. Yes. Colors also matter. If you are using royal colors for a premium, if you are using just black and white, that's also fine. But if you are using very dull colors for a premium market, it does not resonate. Something is missing. They feel it's not they vibing. No, it's not vibrant or no? it's not looking grand or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Next, it is about videos. For videos, I have an interesting way. So videos, what to do is to make your videos more enhancing, 
you type your favorite YouTube, YouTuber name on YouTube and type edits. You'll get a list of videos as to how people, how those people edit. You can follow those edit transitions, placements, uh, the kind of approach, they, the kind of shots they take in your product. So that looks very cinematic and very engaging for the audience. They feel it is entertainment than just seeing your advertisement. Okay, interesting. <laughs> for example, I was using Mr. Beast plus edits because Mr. Beast has done a lot of videos and his edits are done by many people as to how he edits. So you check out that, you can use that. Then areas to find hook. How you can find hook? Hook is the most important whenever you're marketing videos. Hook is the first three seconds of your video. In first three seconds, everyone will decide whether I need to watch the fourth second or not. That's it. Your hook is, becomes the most important. How do you create good hooks? It is about check out your Insta, check out your social media page, check out Instagram reels which has the highest reach. See what is the first three to four seconds. It's not just that you'll be using that three seconds only here. Take inspiration from it, understand it, understand the breakdown, and then use it. TikTok, anyways, it's banned in India, but you can use VPN and check out related to your brand, hmm. related to some inspiration. Then you can check out computer ads. Then any pop, any particular story of the audience, if you can uh, relate to with your product. For example, for a SaaS product, what you could do is, uh, when I was into this SaaS product, they were selling billing software. So what I did as a hook was a, a, peep, a person texting in WhatsApp, please send a payment to a client. Like as a, as a top, it says client, like wherever you see the name, wherever it's you see yeah, yeah. the WhatsApp. And there he's texting, please send the payment. Then the client does not reply two days, three days. So that is the kind of hook which people are attracted to because that's their pain. Hmm. Yeah, so you need to think about that. So more examples I have laid it down here. Yeah, that is what I've mentioned regarding the SaaS brand. So that is the kind of hook where you raise the customer in the state of mind they are. Mm -hmm. Can you please show any examples of YouTube name? This? Yeah, you can just type Mr. Mr. Beast and edits. Uh, do I need? I'll show. Not a problem. Maybe you're talking about uh, finding out the guys you like their video quality or videos, what they make, then you can try the edits then, uh, but how will, uh, uh, not everyone will be sharing that, no? so Mr. Beast edits. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Beast edits are done by not Mr. Beast, but other YouTubers. Someone else is saying how they do it, how he is doing it, okay. Yes, okay. yeah, so other video editors will share as to Mr. Beast. How does he do the, does this, okay. He edit, or Mr. Beast does edits. Edit compilation. So okay. check out video. So he's a video editor. You check out as to how he edits. He'll explain as to what transition he used. Everything. Mm. Feel this. See how what a new YouTuber can learn from Mr. Beast. So everything you take up from there. Okay. If Mr. Beast, you can type your favorite YouTuber, but he should be big name. Otherwise, people will not see whether he's editing or not. Ha. Agar big name hoga to uska public will search so people will make it. Correct. So maybe I think you need to figure out if you're not able to find the your favorite YouTuber, then you see agar search volume mein sa jada hai, aapko relatable hai. Then yeah. maybe you can figure out the, you can try to see those people. Correct. Okay. Primarily figure out design relevance for your brand before you start creating relevance. Yes, absolutely. But I have seen that in India. 99% of brand don't have a brand guideline or brand brief at all. Like whenever I ask them, they say, no, I don't have it. Sure. Then they need to instruct them that, okay, please create this and send it over. Or I need to sit on a call with them that, okay, what do you think your brand is? Where do you position and everything? So this is inter this is certainly needed, but uh, Indian brands are not very aware of this. You have to make them answer maybe so many questions. And uh, if you send a form or something, they will not answer. You need to get on a call, take notes, as I hota India with brands. Yes, sir. Okay. So next pack. Common angle you can use in your ads. So this is a complete list which I've been developing for a while now. So people love to see comparisons, now state and future state, pain using the present. They want to see as a hook which can be used. What is the pain? That 
that pain can be used as a hook. Just now I mentioned about this WhatsApp payment. Then it is present trend. If it is a present trend in the market, as a gift, you can promote your product or as a money saved, as time saved, less work, affordability, better lifestyle, handsome or beautiful for skincare related products, respect. You'll gain respect from this by having this product in your house. Then what are the ingredients? Everything. Then authority. Authority means you use an authoritative figure. For example, the other day, a fitness watch was being promoted by Virat Kohli because that's an authoritative figure related to fitness. Why did they choose Virat Kohli and not Roshan? It's important because Virat Kohli defines fitness. It's not Rohit Sharma. That's it. Then you use reviews. Then uneasiness with the present scenario. You just, as I said earlier, that picking the pimples, that is the uneasiness which people have. You can use that as a hook in your creator. People use a lot of this head and shoulders, use the dandruff fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. People want easy results. They understand people want easy results. They want, they need not want always fast, but they want a simple solution. Sometimes people will wait. If at all, what you need to do is with your solution, you need to provide instant wins, not the biggest win, but the instant win. For example, whenever a supplement brand sends a product, they know 90 days is the minimum time where you see the result. But before that, they'll help you find they'll help you give uh, instant result in terms of weight loss by 1 kg, 2 kg, so that you keep on doing it until 90 days where you hit a big result. Mm. That is also important whenever you sell a product. Then search for complementaries. I mentioned about uh, without makeup uh, the, a few minutes back. So you need to understand what are the complementaries people use apart from your thing. If they want a glowing skin, what are Things related to glowing skin. Is it makeup? It's makeup. It's this. It's that. You know, chemical, this? chemical free, natural. Many, many terms are there. But again, you need to figure out what is not very frequently used because nowadays people are abusing it. Like mm -hmm. the organic, natural, especially in this food and beauty industry. Yeah. Okay. So next, it is about account structure. This is a relatively easier topic. So account structure is campaigns. I This is my account structure. You are free to use any account structure. There is no definitive requirement to use any account structure. One campaign I use for creative testing, one campaign for prospecting. Here is how it goes. Whenever I, create, whenever I take up a new brand, I create two campaigns. One is for creative testing, second is for prospecting. In creative testing, I create five to six ad sets. I use one creative in two ad sets. In each ad set, I use three to four ads. So I'm testing multiple creatives first. What is the creative that resonates most with the audience? Whenever if I find a winning creative, I move that creative to a prospecting campaign, which is nothing but your audience testing campaign. That is how I work. If you have better approaches, you're free to use. That's how I have, it's been good and it's been working since past few years. If you know more clarity on this, please let me. But uh, one, once can we go back? So one, but what if uh, the campaign you use for creative testing uh, is working really well and you want to continue with the same thing? Uh, okay, yeah, you. that is the question most people have. If your creative is working already well, don't stop it. Don't pause it at all. Just duplicate the creative to the prospecting campaign, but don't pause it. You are I came across people saying that uh, some people said like, I've been running a campaign, uh, not in the Facebook context, Google ka it, it banda bol rahe. Google ka campaign mene chalu kiya tha long back. It still gives me, with a lower budget, it gives me enough leads, so I don't touch it. Yeah, sometimes it's end, it's at the end machine learning and mathematics. Machine learning also, it's more. It's mathematics at the end, everything is mathematics there. Because I come from a computer science background, I understand these concepts. So it's a, at the end, mathematics there, will campaign sites not overlap for location? No. If you're targeting India, you just need to think that you're targeting India and there are roughly 100 million, more than 100 million on Facebook. They are most likely not to overlap because Facebook algorithm is trained very efficiently to target new people. But what happens is whenever you're starting for a low budget, it will target people who have already bought your products to give you an instant win so that you continue the campaign. That's a trick Facebook uses. So what you do is whenever you're targeting a new campaign, 
exclude the previous 30 days or previous 60 days. Uh, hope that clears uh, Mukesh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So targeting you can do based on interest, based on gender, based on age, based on device, based on broad audiences with no interest. So interest based, everyone knows, gender based. So you target only women, target a certain age group, don't target any interests. That is the targeting you can follow. Or you target just age group, no gender, no, or like all gender, no interest. And you can do device targeting. If you're targeting, this, is, this has worked previously, where I'll be targeting women, age group 18 to 40, and I'll be targeting only women who use iPhones, who have OS greater than 13 or 14 as a version. Because if you target OS less than that, it's highly unlikely that they have bought once in a while iPhone just to brag about it and not very premium market who can afford your products if you're selling your premium product. Mm -hmm. That way you're targeting a premium customer without actually targeting the interests. Yeah. Then you can target broad audiences with no interest. Like right? you just create an ad set, no age group, no interest. you create it. Next, targeting um, once again a list, interest based, age based, work they do, gender, magazines, brands, websites they visit. Websites they visit, whenever it's a really big brand, only then you can target because you cannot target somewhere uh, very niche websites which they visit. Then it's based on festivals, news, celebs. Then just broad. Yeah. Next, coming on to the copy. So, inspirations which I take from songs on your pain, like just now I showed I and Hindi songs, that one. Then jokes. I you I search both jokes as well as one-liners. Where I search I and one-liners related to that. This gives you good inspiration to be used in the creative, in the creative copy. The eyes shout what the lips fear to say. So it's an interesting take. You can take a from this. Yeah, all this you can take. When you're when you're trying to promote a I I I product and lipstick both na I both acha mutlab quote hai. Next it is about competitor ads. You can check out competitor ads. You can check out blogs in your industry. Google SEO about your product. Everything related. For example, whenever you type your product name, your good headlines appear here. You can use those headlines as well. You can go to the second search results page and check out that as well. Not just one, but two, three. Until there, you'll find really interesting insights as well as copy inspirations. Yeah. Then it's uh, tips. It would be use pointers in your copy and emojis in your copy. Don't use emojis excessively. Just use one or two frequently just to come convey the emotion. If you're saying happy, like this will make you happy, then show an emoji which is happy. It will convey more better and efficient. Then leave space for a point you want to emphasize. So whatever you point you want to emphasize about your product, you have written a paragraph, leave one line, write that one line which you want to emphasize, then leave one line once again, so that it emphasizes and creates a mark on your customer. This is all subconsciously it is done, doing. Then run ads with no primary text, just the headline. If you're selling a lifestyle, this is a really interesting concept where you can use, where you don't use any primary text, any description, no caption, just your creative, your headline, that's it. Run it because it's lifestyle. It's highly unlikely people will look at your copy or something. Everything is in design and everything you need to convey. Yeah, especially the kapada over ka jo na. Ab kya matlab gyan pal devo usme. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows it's cotton. Okay, you can mention cotton in your creative only. So then it's about mention your offer in the primary text than in the headline. People, this people think that people read headline first. It's not the case. Whenever you scroll up, it's the primary text which appears the first. People miss out on this. And whenever you're creating a creative, don't mention the copy down. It's it's bad. It's not bad. It's uh, improper. You need to mention your copy top. Why? Because whenever you scroll, it's the top which is visible first, hmm. not the bottom. You should understand this. Uh, that will that will get masked in that image because image paper mask will get copy if it's down. That's what you're trying to say. No, no, I'm saying in the creative, whenever you mention some text, uh -huh. from the top, not, at, not on the bottom, because when you scroll, you're not scrolling from the bottom, you're scrolling mm -hmm. from the top. Mm -hmm. Once people read that headline, they'll find it, if they find it catchy, they'll scroll and first they'll find out what it is and everything. If you mention in the bottom, they'll see the image, okay, they'll not read the bottom uh -huh. copy. Text will get uh, what we say, 
it not get the attention it actually yeah. should be. Yeah. yeah. And whenever you mention primary text, primary text is the in Facebook, not in Instagram. In Facebook, the three lines which appear above the creator, like the okay. copy. Okay. That there you mention the offer rather than in the headline which appears below the creator, where uh, it appears big but it's not where people read. Whenever you read, you read from top to bottom, then from bottom to top. So that's the kind. Then in headline, mention about shipping and COD available or your USB whatever it is. Yeah. Next landing page experiences sections you want to have in your product pages is dedicated offer section. So people uh, like right now brands are taking this into consideration where in the product page you mention you create a section called offers and you mention all the coupon codes that are live. What are the offers you have? Everything so that people don't want to search and everywhere that where is the coupon code where I can I find this and everything. You make it easier for customers. Then effective section. So once there is a coupon code, what I observed is uh, it's a human tendency. If there is a coupon code, if there is no interest in buying it, they will want to go and insert the coupon code and see what oh, it does. It's a psychology. Hai, that, that can be very well used. Amazon also uses it. Although it gives you a discount of 3 or 5 rupees, the coupon code is now going to be a great Indian festival. Ki they use it. And I feel like that means the power is in your hands. Coupon code is like that. The power is in your hands. You're taking it and you're pasting it. And they can instantly have the price come over. That's a magical mm -hmm. feeling. Matlab, mujhe achha lagta hai and I think that's working well. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Interesting point there. Mm -hmm. Then if you can mention FAQ section which handle objections, then benefit driven image. In the images only you should convey rather than in the description. Description is important, it's important for everything, which is 200 words long. You concise that in your images itself and mention four benefits using arrows from your product or using uh, mentioning the point wise. You use a image, this is an image, this is a product image. You mentioned the four benefits of the product in the image itself, in the product image, in your landing page. Then for lifestyle brands, inspiration behind the design or fragrance of product is important. As to what led to this design, that is where your brand storytelling is. What is the inspiration? Uh, the other time, Mukesh, uh, Dev that was asking about how uh, you can handle home sari, you can use this as an interesting take to improve your landing page experience. Okay. Increase Sorry, the sometimes the artisans or the uh, community support in the community. Yeah. The story can also maybe in the landing page we can inculcate yeah. ki, this handloom service are made for, made by this uh, community in this specific place, and this is helping them also. Like the, maybe that kind of angle, because uh, many artistic brands na, they try to. I've seen many artistic brands they try to uh, root it back to the place where na, they were actually. Supporting sometimes they are like working with only Oman artisans, yeah. or they're like they're working only with one village uh, artisans. That, that's the that's the brand story they're trying to tell. And uh, like Niemans is there. Yes. Niemans is always trying to say that we want to protect this earth. Yeah. Whatever product they use, they they, they will bring up. They will come up with a uh, stories uh, story. They're connecting with the purpose. It's a purpose driven brand. So, like likewise, in any brand, in due to any discipline, I think can take that if you are trying to relate it, especially handloom saris dasji. Aapke paas ye bada point hai. Aap use karna chahiye aapko. Yeah. And next, it is about product packaging. Product packaging. This is I read this somewhere in the article. Your product pack packaging should actually help your uh, brand to get the recall. What I mean by this is. Rather than sending just brown box, if you are economically and financially sound, you need to create a unique product packaging which people can showcase in the in their house without the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that creates a brand recall. Rather than showing just a brown box, in the, on the brown box you create an interesting design where people can keep it in their crockery set near the crockery set or near the showpiece near the TV set anywhere. So, and your brand logo is everything is there, but the design acts as a showpiece. Yeah. That yeah. will help your brand recall. Mm -hmm. Every little detail matters. Rather than throwing the product, they're keeping it. And whenever they're looking to buy the next time, your brand will appear on the top because they have seen so many times in, the, in their house. Sometimes we, we don't want to throw away those uh, covers we get. Yeah. We purchase some items, no? the packaging is so good. Yeah. But uh, we want to keep it. Though we don't use it, we want to keep it. Yeah. Because yeah. That happens. yeah. 
So increase the product assortment with different use cases. You need to get into the products, uh, customers like PVR, popcorn, steel box is correct. So that kind of approach. Then where your product is Instagrammable. By Instagrammable, I mean your product packaging is so good that people click photos and tag you in the, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Not just product, your product packaging or product. Product, okay, fine. Product packaging is so good that see, it's an interesting design. They share it with their friends. You're getting virality for free. That sleepy all is there, no? Sleepy all. Uh, yeah. There are some brands who do the packaging really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next, that is it regarding retention. So retention, basic automations you can run are these welcome, post purchase, review, thank you, shipping and confirmation, everything. That's it. Thank you. That is it from my side. Okay. I'm open to any questions if you have. That's a, that's a crisp uh, uh, one, Kanish. I think um, definitely I would like to, uh, we can show, we can stop the presentation so that if anyone wants to come on the camera, I would like to invite them to come on the cam. Yes. So that will be great. So guys, any questions, anything specific, uh, you can open up and talk. And meanwhile, I just want to engage Kanish uh, with few things and uh, in 15 minutes, 10 minutes or few minutes, we'll wrap it up. So Kanish, I think uh, you covered up everything in a pretty good way, like the basics, the understanding and all, like for the D2C brands and all, what all is important. You, you just not uh, said like, nah, uh, only you did not tell only that, uh, uh, just not about just running ads or something like that. You don't jump into it. You try to give away the whole, whole perspective. Uh, but while approaching any D2C brand, like, did you face an issue with na, getting uh, the required inputs from the brand owners? Uh, how did you manage that specific uh, thing? Getting required inputs, could you elaborate on that? Like let us say, now they, your brand owner has approached you, they wanted to get results, they want to do marketing. Thank you, Vish. So now you need some inputs. Sometimes we don't get all the inputs, na? like how are you able to manage to get the inputs? That's the, that, that's the thing I want to ask. Okay. So if I tell I don't get any inputs, I ask them that uh, get me a customer of yours. Only that. Okay. Uh, I'll ask and drill them down that uh, get me a customer of yours and I'll ask him all the questions if you're not ready. Then I'll ask them. Otherwise, I go to their website and read each and every detail. Hmm. Yeah. So existing website way. will help us uh, to get a lot of inputs. Yeah. 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 Existing websites or their properties, whatever the social properties are there. Uh, Pankaji, thank you very much. So Pankaji is thank into you. WhatsApp marketing. He has a tool cool. also, WhatsApp marketing tool. Uh, like what it's mostly into WhatsApp marketing, not API based. You can bombard. That's how it works. Like without risking your number and all. Okay. And uh, he actually has that tool and he sells it. So Got that's it. the thing. Uh, but Pankaji is a veteran marketer. Tried everything and settled with WhatsApp marketing. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, th thank you, Pankaji. So uh, this is one thing. Uh, then one more thing, Anish, like when you're approaching a D2C brand, um, like you're, you're starting up, let us say, in the starting stages, how did you how could you convince them to actually na, give you a project? Oh, when okay. You... Like that, I have, okay. Uh, when I just started out, yeah, yeah. Right now I have case studies. No, when you started off, because that time you don't have anything. No, but okay. I found I learned this from someone else. What I did is I got to got an internship under an agency. Okay, with an agency. Okay. The clause that I will be using your results without revealing any identity. I will be keeping completely confidential, but using your results. Okay. Yeah. So whatever results I get, I'll be using that to portray that uh, see I've got those results hmm. because I was the only one who was handling. If I was a hmm. team, then I would have not done this ever. I was the only one who was handling and I, I used to use that results to show it to, to acquire the clients. I didn't uh, jump onto clients directly. I got into an agency, got some results there, showed that and then acquired clients. Okay, got it. So initially you tried to approach an agency saying that I can do this work. Give me that. So internship I have opportunity. Mila. Yes. And you told that, okay, I have to show it. But 
ऐसा नहीं कि मैं आपको एक्सप्लिसिटली शो को आई शो इट टू द वर्ल्ड बट आई कैन यूज इट टू गेट माई क्लाइंट दैट्स वॉट यू डिट दैट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग keeping completely confidential as the name of the brand anything ah, yeah. just show the results that only when you are trying to pitch or talk to a individual client then prospect then only you use those things yes correct okay then uh, so as of now like what is that you think uh, like till now what is the ratio of clients you get inbound versus outbound how is it as of now the clients you are handling etc okay until Jul- until june 2021 everything was outbound 2022 sorry 2022 like 3 months back now 60% is inbound okay that's great so you told you used to have a lot of outbound so how you used to reach out to those people can uh, you repeat any one or two uh, things yeah so first was facebook, hmm. facebook facebook groups or facebook groups group then it was linkedin hmm. reddit reddit i was using cold emails mm mm-hmm. then upwork i do i used to do it early back in the day like yeah yeah upwork fiverr upwork hmm. but those were all the things okay okay awesome awesome uh, kanish i think uh, this is a valuable session because people uh, most of the guys are not actually putting enough outbound efforts even most of the agencies i know because they're getting referrals inbound they're getting they're not focusing on the outbound aspects and most of them are ma- they're not marketing themselves that is where i felt like you are not you're not stopping any day i see that you continuously post ca- consistent content so does it does it help you because on facebook you post on a regular basis yeah. so does it help you get clients yes i have got like i got my first facebook client in july 2020 but after how many time how many days of posting consistently uh, i was posting from 8 months 6 to 8 months Huh. but how did you keep that uh, consistency because 8 months is a very long time na no? yeah so uh, i was not creating explicitly for facebook i was mm. for linkedin as well mm. so i was just using that in the facebook so i did not feel as to uh, it's waste okay so linkedin was more successful for you than facebook or how does it work initially i was not getting any clients from linkedin but i was getting attraction from linkedin people used to at least ask in terms of questions if they had any questions they used to ask So at least that kept me going. Okay, that's working. Something is working. Yeah, that's motivating you because at least some people are interacting with my content. Uh, so you you were kind of na you were uh, uh, that that guy that kept you motivated. Maybe that's what. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it's a big effort only because most of the guys are not doing. I'll tell you because I know so many guys, so many agencies, so many marketers in the community. Uh, but I always keep emphasizing on that na having your own inbound engine. you need to create an inbound engine it will take some time but definitely if you don't create an inbound engine uh, only depending upon uh, uh, something na uh, mention uh, referrals uh, because half of the agencies are just with referrals yes uh, and definitely community is helping sometimes collaborations happen and all because marketers not every marketer can do everything like yes. because agencies na it's digital marketing is too too vast Yeah. Uh, so that that's the thing so one more thing kanishka i would like to ask you uh, is are you open to na collaborating on white label with other agencies out in our community because niche marketers is a community where we have a lot of agencies yeah good yes i am already working with a few already okay. you you do white labeling means you provide services uh, on behalf of the agency you work for them you take up the project and you represent that agency that's right. all Okay, that's a good thing. So, any any specific niche you think you have a very good hold, or you think uh, in the D two C side, or uh, anything you have like uh, you want to tell this is something which where we are very strong or have got very good results. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, for a cologne brand, for uh, shoes, for uh, skincare, skincare though it's competitive, I was able to deliver results. Okay, skincare and uh, cologne means yeah, okay, I got it. and shoes shoes brand these brands you were able to good any i think all three are coming into beauty and lifestyle na that's that's how it is lifestyle yeah yeah it's lifestyle yeah, yeah. okay kanish i think uh, it's very good thank you very much and anyone who joined late if have want to ask anything ruchira has joined just now hey kanish uh, hi ruchira uh, kanish ko mujhe ye puchna hai tumse main bhi actually performance marketing mein hu to aur main bhi ek digital marketer hu indore se 
और मुझे ये पूछना था कि तुम जैसे अपनी परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग में तो तुम ब्रांड को या बिजनेस को अपनी जो स्ट्रेटजी भी बना कर देते हो क्या स्पेशली अलग अलग स्ट्रेटजी का मतलब सिर्फ परफॉर्मेंस मार्केट की स्ट्रेटजी आप बात कर रहे हो कैसे बात है हां ओवरऑल ब्रांड स्ट्रेटजी ब्रांड स्ट्रेटजी यस बनाता हूं पर उसमें वो एक्सप्लिसिटली मेंशन होता है कि आपको ब्रांड स्ट्रेटजी भी बनाना है मैं जब कॉल करता हूं मतलब डिस्कवरी कॉल जो मैं जो हम बोलते हैं जब फर्स्ट टाइम क्लाइंट से मिलते हैं तो उसमें पूछ लेता हूं कि आपको सिर्फ परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग मार्केटिंग का चाहिए या फिर ओवरऑल स्ट्रेटजी भी चाहिए नहीं मैं ब्रांड स्ट्रेटजी का पूछ रही थी जैसे कि अगर कुछ लोग होते हैं ना जिनको ओवरऑल करवाना होता है बट वो बोलते हैं कि नहीं हमारे पास में हमारी टीम है हमारे पास में ग्राफिक डिजाइनर है हमारे पास में कंटेंट राइटर भी है हमारे पास में जो भी उनकी टीम होती है वो ओवरऑल सारी टीम है उनके पास उनके पास एड्स रन करने वाले भी है सब कुछ है बट उनको चाहिए कि स्ट्रेटजी हमारे लिए कोई बना दे अच्छा कंसल्टेशन बेसिस यस अच्छा तो स्ट्रेटजी जो तुम बनाते हो उसका क्या मतलब क्राइटेरिया क्या होता है और कैसे बनाते हो या सो कंसल्टेशन में ऐसे नहीं होता है कि मैं एक बार में बोल देता हूं कि ये कर दो और ये हो जाएगा क्योंकि वो तो सेंस नहीं बनता है मैं बोल देता हूं कि 30 60 डेज में मॉनिटर भी कर दूंगा ये स्ट्रेटजी है इसको आपको इंप्लीमेंट करना है मतलब मैं स्ट्रेटजी के लिए एक टेम्पलेट ही एक्चुअली यूज करता हूं जिसमें मैं मेंशन कर देता हूं कि कैसे कैंपेंस होने चाहिए कैसे क्रिएटिव्स होने चाहिए कैसे मैसेजिंग होने चाहिए कौन सी टारगेटिंग होनी चाहिए सब कुछ मेंशन कर देता हूं अच्छा ये आपको तो आप मैसेज कर देना मतलब फेसबुक पे आप मुझे मैं आपको वो टेम्पलेट भी शेयर कर दूंगा अगर चाहिए तो ठीक है हां बिल्कुल आप शेयर कर देना टेम्पलेट मेरे साथ में और एक और चीज मुझे पूछनी थी कि कंटेंट कैलेंडर भी आप बनाते हो क्या जैसे अगर किसी को चाहिए तो परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग में होता है ना कि हमारे पास में हम ऑलरेडी एक टेम्पलेट बेस पे या एक कंटेंट स्ट्रेटजी पे हम काम कर रहे थे तो वो जो है अभी काम नहीं कर रहा है क्योंकि हम लोग 2 से 3 महीने या 6 महीने से अप्लाई कर रहे थे इसको बट अब हमको चाहिए इसमें कुछ चेंजेस तो या तुम पुराना वाला देख के बनाते हो अपना नया ही बनाते हो कि नहीं ये मेरी स्ट्रेटजी है या मेरा कंटेंट कैलेंडर है और इस टाइप से आपको कंटेंट बनाना है और इसी टाइप का कंटेंट जो है अब आपकी वेबसाइट पर या आपके सोशल मीडिया पर या YouTube पर अब जो है आना चाहिए अच्छा परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग में आप सोशल मीडिया इंक्लूड कर रहे हो वो समझ नहीं मतलब कंटेंट कैलेंडर तो आपका कंटेंट मतलब ऐसा होता है ना कंटेंट मार्केटिंग का पार्ट में पूछ रहे हो परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग तो ठीक है आपने मुझे स्ट्रेटजी बता दी कि हां मेरे ऐड की ये वाली स्ट्रेटजी होती है और मैं एक टेम्पलेट यूज करता हूं कि इस इस टाइम पे मैं ये इस टाइप का स्ट्रेटजी प्लान करता हूं अभी मैं पूछ रहा हूं आपसे कंटेंट वाला पार्ट हां तो कंटेंट के लिए मैं पहले बना देता अभी मैं इतना बनाता नहीं हूं मैं ये कर लेता हूं कि पहले कौन सा कंटेंट वर्क वर्क कर रहा है उनको ही पूछ लेता हूं कि कैसे वाले वर्क कर रहे हैं और कैसे वाले वर्क कर रहे थे और उसके बेसिस पे और रिसर्च कर देता हूं उनके बारे में उनके बारे में और क्या चल रहा है सोशल मीडिया पे सब कुछ के बारे में रिसर्च थ्री थिंग्स एक्चुअली वर्क होती है एक तो पहले क्या वर्क हुआ है क्या नहीं वर्क हुआ है वो भी चाहिए क्योंकि वो भी इंपॉर्टेंट है क्या नहीं वर्क हुआ है सेकंड इट वुड बी उनको फाउंडर के साथ एक्चुअल में कॉल पे बैठ के उनको उनका ब्रांड समझने का और थर्ड आपकी रिसर्च इन तीनों को कंबाइन करके मैं कंटेंट कर रहा हूं वो मंथली होता है या फिर आपकी तीन मंथ का एक बार में बना के दे देते हो कि तीन मंथ तो इसी टाइप का ही कंटेंट आएगा अभी हां नहीं 3 मंथ्स लॉन्ग टाइम हो जाते हैं क्योंकि 3 मंथ्स में इवेंट्स बहुत हो जाते हैं हां क्योंकि इंडिया बहुत वास्ट मार्केट और इवेंट्स तो हर दूसरे दिन हो जाता है तो इसलिए 1 मंथ इज द बेस्ट शेड्यूल अच्छा मे बी आई थिंक रुचिरा कंटेंट कैलेंडर के बारे में ना आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द गाइस मोस्ट ऑफ द ब्रांड्स आर इवन नॉट इंप्लीमेंटिंग प्रॉपर कंटेंट कैलेंडर सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग एंड एक बात क्या है ना बहुत लोग टेम्पलेट्स लेके चलते हैं बट आई फील पर्सनली कि we need to customize things and dusri uh, cheez hai ki we need to figure out a way where we try to uh, re- re- revise things on a regular basis ki uh, what kind of content is getting more attra- attention then see waisa to continuously ek hi template leke chalenge to shayad lamba nahi chal payega and dusri cheez hai ki dusri thi ki jaise hota na monthly abhi kuch hamare festivals aane hain jo aane to wo aapko pata hi hota hai pehle se ki har pure jaise ek hafte ya navratri chalengi तो नौ दिन का तो ये कंटेंट होता ही होता है इसके बाद दशहरा आ जाएगा तो दशहरे का अलग टाइप का कंटेंट होगा और दिवाली आएगी तो उसके पहले आपको प्रिपेयर रहना है कि इस टाइप का कंटेंट आना चाहिए तो मैं वो बात कर रही थी हाँ बट सही है बट व्हाट आई फील पर्सनली मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल जनरली इन इंडिया वॉट देर इंडिया इंडिया भी नहीं बोलूंगा कहीं पर भी वॉट देर डू जनरली नेशनल इम्पोर्टेंट डेज को पकड़ के दैट इज ओनली सोशल मीडिया कैंपेन का पार्ट ज्यादा हो रहा है लाइक दैट्स वॉट आई एम पर्सनली ऑब्जर्विं
कि यार वो भी दशहरा में विश कर रहे हैं हम भी विश कर रहे हैं क्या बड़ी बात है लाइक आई आई फील दैट वे क्रिएटिव वे में आप कितना कर सकते हो हाँ एक तो क्रिएटिव वे हो गया विश तो सभी करते हैं वो हाँ. नहीं बट क्रिएटिव वे में सोशल मीडिया तो क्रिएटिव वाला पार्ट आ जाता है ना अगर आप बात करो तो क्रिएटिव वे में करना दैट इज वन थिंग बिकॉज वे टॉकिंग अबाउट स्ट्रेटेजी साइड ना आप जो बात कर रहे हैं स्ट्रेटेजी क्रिएटिविटी इज कमिंग नेक्स्ट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में आ रहा है तो दूसरा चीज क्या लगता है कि हाउ यू कैन एक्चुअली मेक सम यूजर जनरेटेड कंटेंट कुछ ब्रांड्स के लिए यूजर जनरेटेड कंटेंट बहुत अच्छे से कर सकता है होस्टिंग कंटेस्ट कई बार मेरे को एक इंटीरियर डिजाइन इंटीरियर डिजाइन इंटीरियर डिजाइन नहीं इंटीरियर होम होम इंटीरियर जो थोड़ा प्रीमियम ब्रांड अप्रोच किया था देन वॉट आई केम अप विथ इज वाई डोंट यू एनकरेज यूअर कस्टमर्स टू पोस्ट ए पिक्चर ऑफ दम स्टैंडिंग बाई द फर्नीचर यू हैव सोल्ड दम Ask them to post a picture and say, "Up, uh, they will, uh, they will, they will become a part of the contest. Who will post? And we'll give you, you'll give a hand lamp or something. A lamp, they will give a gift. Me, the winner, ko something like that. So, usme kya hoga? Indirectly, aapka reviews bhi ho jayega, testimonial bhi ho jayega, na? Like, uh, and she is also spreading that thing to her audience. Unko bolna hai ki aap apna Instagram handle me post karlo and tag us, tag the brand name. Then she, उनको फ्रेंड सर्कल भी को भी पता चल जाएगा सो देर आर डिफरेंट वेस आई थिंक वी कैन डू दिस सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग एंड डेफिनेटली वी कैन टॉक ओवरऑल में परफॉर्मेंस में से सोशल मीडिया का नहीं पूछ रही थी मैं ओवरऑल जैसे अगर आप परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग में आप ब्रांडिंग करते हो तो उसमें क्या कॉन्टेंट का जो स्ट्रेटेजी okay. होती है वो भी प्लान मैं यही पूछ रही थी कनिश से मतलब ये तो नॉर्मल सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग का पार्ट होता ही होता है क्या बातें हुई है क्या हुआ है बट हाँ मुझे मैंने अभी देखा फेसबुक पर तो मैंने सोचा मैं ज्वाइन कर दिया एंड थैंक यू सो मच तुमने अपना जो थॉट शेयर किया और मुझे प्लीज टेम्पलेट भी शेयर कर देना जो तुम ऑलमोस्ट यूज कर रिकॉर्डिंग हाँ, हाँ, आपको मिल जाएगा गोवर्धन आपको रिकॉर्डिंग भी देते थैंक यू देव थैंक यू देव श्योर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू गणेश थैंक यू फॉर द टाइम एंड थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग थैंक यू जो थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय बाय